Um, uh, I'm gonna let Lynn jump in as well, but I will give you the big picture and then also it's hard to follow the, the storytelling of the library because those are such beautiful um, projects and we're kind of on only on the cusp of doing this. But um, so just as a quick background on our project, as some of you may remember, we're um, based in the Boston Public Library and our project is working with high schools, several high school partners in Boston, calling them our um, empowering student map activists. So doing map um, based work and including creating data based maps with students to help them explore the city and to understand issues and perhaps suggest solutions um, for those issues. So we do a lot of you know, survey type mapping, um, teaching students to take data and actually drop it into a map, including looking at already created maps. Um, our work was obviously, as everyone interrupted this year, so a lot of our student work was not finished. Um, we had to, you know, we, we abandoned it obviously in early March. So we did get kind of half of our lessons in with our main partner, the uh, Margarita Muniz Academy, which is the a bilingual Spanish English high school in Boston. So when this opportunity came up, um, Lynn jumped right on it and we asked our partner teachers to suggest students to us, many of whom were imminent to graduate um, because our Muniz students are actually seniors. And we wanted the opportunity to just talk to them about our, the work that we did with them and also really to talk to them about maps as, and the impact of maps and mapping. So the teacher suggested a group of students and we had actually four students we started with who were going to be the moderators for the discussions with a larger group of students that were pulled in. So we had an introductory um, session with them and actually they brainstormed the questions that they wanted to ask in smaller breakout groups with this larger group of students. And the larger group was composed not just of seniors, we had you know, some students who were sophomores and again from a wider range, really representing about three different high schools in Boston. So they all did not know each other, which was really fun too. Um, so it was really fascinating just to hear kind of where what they took from our work with them and how they think about maps and the generation of the questions was really fantastic the students kind of came to this question series that starts with kind of like what are maps right so that's how we sort of begin with the students like what are they what do they mean to you what do you think of when you think of a map and thinking about their own experiences using maps in their day-to-day -day life and then they sort of organically came up with this process where it was like, okay, so um, how do you use maps? And then um, digging deeper another level, like, so what, um, when we think about maps made of data, how, how is that collected? And what do you think about, um, are there kind of good and bad ways to do that? And so thinking about how the data coming from their community might have different stories depending on who's collecting it and who's using it. And then really thinking about um, maps and, and issues for them that are personal to them and what would they want to know more about through maps. Some of the conversation went right to COVID. A lot of the students had been really paying attention to different maps of Boston or internationally, nationwide, thinking about COVID rates and how some of those are really deceiving. So it was kind of a very at the moment conversation. Um, so then shortly thereafter, we brought the whole group together. We broke them on Zoom into breakout rooms. Lynn and I took a room each and our moderators took it from there. Lynn and I basically just sat in the background and let the students do the, whole, do the interviews. Um, and they collected just some great, uh, you know, answers from the students. I think that uh, it was heartening for us to hear some of the big ideas behind maps that they did, he even not having finished the year with them, to really hear what they had to say and how they had sort of never thought about maps in that way. Like you think about using a, a map on their phone, but never had really thought about them in a way of like addressing change and systems and systemic racism and gentrification and all of the issues that we look at with them. So, um, our next steps with that, you know, we recorded the sessions um, and we'll be kind of writing those pieces up. It'll, it'll, 
obviously kind of go into our bigger picture, but it helped us inform how we think about the course moving forward and some of the pieces that students took away what we thought were most important. And even from that adding on, we're actually creating a full elective course for um, with a partner, one of our partner high schools that we're hoping to teach possibly this fall remotely, which is kind of <laughs> terrifying, exciting. But some of those same students we brought in to help us begin to outline um, the early parts of that course because it's very student driven. So we wanted to even ask them like, you know, even as simple things like getting to know each other, icebreaker activities, but also how we should structure the whole class. So that was, it was really great um, experience. I will say that as an institution, I think we brought some of what we had done back to our colleagues too. And we're also thinking about as an institution, how we can also ask these questions of the larger community in Boston. And it's funnel, fueled some other ideas for working with community organizations. So I think even if we don't have this, uh, you know, a beautiful product that, that other than what we're using just for our work with these high schools, I think it has spurred a lot of inspiration amongst our colleagues. So I think we're grateful for that. Um, Lynn, do you want to tuck in there too? Um, well, I can give maybe one specific example of like things that came up in some of the conversations. Um, one of the questions that got asked in the interviews was, um, what is a map you'd like to see? Um, which is not necessarily, you know, one that we didn't present in class or one that didn't get addressed. And we have, um, even though students were actually from four different schools um, and students who didn't know each other, two students from two different schools. In Boston, the schools, um, especially the Margarita Muniz, because it's a two-way, by it's the only two-way bilingual Spanish-English uh, high school in the city, um, that the students tend to, students from different immigrant groups tend to um, congregate in different high schools. Um, families want to go where they're, they're, they went, they, you know, neighbors want to send their kids to the same place, or they want to go where their friends are. So um, there was a Cape Verdean kid in one group, and she was talking about how the map she'd really like to see is a map of uh, the islands because they're so small on maps that people don't even know that Cape Verde exists. So that people don't think about where her country is and how she would like to see more maps that sort of talk about Cape Verde. And then one of the other students in the group was like, oh yeah, I'm Salvadoran. And it's the same thing. When we see maps of North America, North and South America, El Salvador is the smallest country in, in uh, Central America. And um, people don't know where I'm from. Um, it, it gets ignored by people. It's not, it's not a prominent place. So people don't really know about our issues. And so the two of them sort of were able to connect around that. So that's the kind of interaction that happened around the stories that I thought were uh, really useful for us in thinking about as we plan to how do we in part, we've asked the students to help us design the elective because they're more aware of where those points of connection can exist at times. Um, but also just for Michelle and I, and, and she, as she said, maybe, maybe the entire MAP Center to be thinking about how do we design to allow for those points of connection to be, to be made, um, whether or not we have a goal for them, right? Like whether or not we think that like, oh, as a result, then they have to like come together and organize something. It's just, um, what's a way for young people in the city to see that people across neighborhoods have similar issues and have similar ideas to share with each other? I think to add to that, we were supposed to have this big event for the first time as in the second year of our project where we were bringing all the students together from all the different schools we work with. and have a kind of a symposium where they were sharing ideas and thoughts. So this was, we were really sad that that didn't happen. So this was at least a nice way to engage with the students. And I put our questions in the chat, if anyone's curious, just our outline of what, um, what the storytelling uh, day afternoon was like. Thank you so much, Michelle. That was fantastic. I um, Lynn.